What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with T-Mobile Rebel 6 Pro 5G camera tips and tricks. So stay tuned if you want to learn how to get the most out of the various cameras on your device. Now the first thing I want to do is go over the actual cameras that we are getting here with the phone. So with this device, we have a 16 megapixel front facing camera, and then on the back of the phone, we have a quad camera setup with a 50 megapixel main camera, a 5 megapixel ultra wide angle camera, a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera for portrait mode, and a 2 megapixel macro camera for close up images. Also, keep in mind that with this phone, which is a bit of a disappointment, we only have portrait mode for the rear camera and not the front camera. And this is honestly one of the few lower end devices that I've used anytime recently that doesn't have portrait mode for the front facing camera. But heading into the camera app, this is how things look with the main rear camera. Then from here, we can go over to this 0.5 to go over to the ultra wide angle camera. And then with that, you're able to fit a lot more content into the frame. Now, I'm a big fan of using an ultra wide camera with any device that has that feature as it really kind of is a nice way to change up the look of your photos. Of course, from a practicality standpoint, you literally can fit more into a single photo, but definitely when I'm on vacation, for example, maybe I wanna take a picture of a large building or a bunch of scenery around me, the ultra wide camera definitely comes in handy in that situation. Then from here, we can go over to the more tab and we can access the macro camera. And with the macro camera, we can get very close up and have things be in really good detail. Then we can also head over to the live focus mode, which is their name for portrait mode. So with that, you get nice blurred out backgrounds. We even have a slider here to adjust the level of blur. If you want the slider to go away, just tap on this button on the left side and it'll now disappear. And then to bring it back, tap on that button once again. And then from here, we can go back over to the main camera mode flip around to the front facing camera and take selfies. Now, typically on most devices, you then go back to portrait mode to take portrait selfies. But as I mentioned earlier on in this video, unfortunately we don't have that feature here. So instead, when you tap on live focus, it simply flips things back to the rear camera. So definitely disappointing that there is no front facing portrait mode here with the phone. Now we can also head over to the other side here to access night mode. So obviously this is ideal in darker situations. So if it's getting later in the day, you might want to consider trying that out instead of the standard photo mode. We can also go over to video here and in video mode, you can take ultra wide videos as well, which is a nice feature to have. And then you can also go up to the gear icon in the upper right to access the settings for the resolution. So you can see video size right here. We have some different options. One of them is 2K, which is pretty nice if you want things to be a bit sharper than 4K. We also have one by one at 1440p for all dimensions. There's also full mode, which takes the entire aspect ratio of the device and makes that one big video. And then also we have support for 60 FPS in addition to 30. Now, unfortunately, 60 FPS only applies to 1080p videos and also the 1440p one by one, but it's good to see that we at least have that feature here. Now, heading back over to this more tab, we have some other options. So one of them is pro mode. Pro mode gives us the most abilities here as far as customization goes. So for example, there's ISO and white balance that can be adjusted. So that's certainly helpful if you wanna take your photography to the next level. There's also panorama. So we can give that a try right now, but essentially with panorama, you can kind of pan things here and make sure that the arrow is following the line, but you can take really wide photos. So we'll stop that, let that process. And there it is right there. Whoops, there's me. There's the panorama photo that I just took. So pretty interesting. Definitely better to use this mode outside versus inside, but it is helpful. There's also stop motion, hyperlapse, macro, which I already showed you, and also 50M. So this device, despite having a 50 megapixel camera, doesn't actually take by default photos in the full 50 megapixels. Now, one reason for that is because that would take up a lot of space in the phone and most people don't actually need that full megapixel count. However, if you want that, you can go over to this mode and then you can just take photos like you typically would. Now, another awesome thing too, is that when you go back over to this more tab, you can actually take any of these six options and add them in to this bottom slider here. So you'll just go to this pencil button in the upper right corner. Then from there, pick whatever you want to move into the main area of the menu. So I'm going to move the macro camera into there. I'm going to put it in between video and photo, and then I'm going to go back. And you can see that we now have the macro camera option right here. So they're easy to access that. Now taking a look at some of the other settings on here in the upper left, we have the option for the flash. So you can have it off, you can have it on auto, you can have it on always on, and then also just have the torch on at all times. So if you do that option, 
It doesn't matter if you're even taking a photo or not, the flashlight or flash or torch or whatever you wanna call it will always be illuminated. And I guess it's kind of hard to see through the viewfinder, but I do indeed have the flash on. Taking a look at some of the other options here, we have this one for the timer. So you can do no timer, three seconds or 10 seconds, which is certainly helpful. We also have some filters to choose from. So you can have no filter or other options like grayscale, sunshine. There is vivid here as well, vintage too. So a lot of different options related to filters. Then we can get out of there for a second. And then from there, you can go up here to where it says four by three and choose other aspect ratios. So you can do 16 by nine, which I think is great for thumbnails for sure. You can do one by one, which is a square photo. And then you can also do full, which takes up the entire display here on the device. Now heading back over to the gear icon, which takes us over to the general settings area. There's a few other things I wanna show you. So one of them is shutter sound. So right now by default, when you wanna take a photo or capture a video, it does make a sound, which I know some people don't wanna have that. So heading back over to the settings, you can turn that off and then now there's no shutter sound at all. Also in this section, we have an option for grid lines. So if you enable that, we now have a three by three grid. So a nice way to kind of frame your photos so that things look a bit more professional. Certainly an option that some people might appreciate. And then there's also an option here for shortcut to take picture. So right now, by default, let me show you how this works. If you tap on one of the volume buttons, it will capture an image or start recording a video. So that's very convenient. But in addition to that, we can go back over to the same area, go to zoom instead, and then go back here, and then you can use volume up to zoom in, and then volume down to zoom out. So that's really cool. And if you zoom out all the way, it actually takes you over to the ultra wide angle camera. Another cool hidden feature as well with the cameras on this device is that you can actually hold down the shutter button to take burst photos. So let's do that right now. And you can see I just took 11 photos very quickly there. So that's pretty awesome. And then another thing I wanna show you, which will be the final thing of this video, is that if you just double tap on the power button, it'll pull up the camera app. So that's really convenient. You can do that from anywhere throughout the operating system. And it's definitely one of those things that I think many people will not be aware of unless they accidentally figure that out. So overall, I'm very impressed with the various cameras and their abilities with the T-Mobile Rebel 6 Pro 5G. I mean, really the only shortcoming when it comes to the cameras on this device is that there is no portrait mode for the front facing camera. But if that's a feature that doesn't really matter to you, then just know that you are getting a lot of different cameras that can do a lot of different things. Now, while none of these cameras are even close to being as capable as a more expensive $1,000 smartphone, at the same time, this is a good way to kind of get a preview of these various features to see if it's worthwhile eventually to get a more higher end, better device than this phone. But I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new today. But this concludes camera tips and tricks for the T-Mobile Rebel 6 Pro 5G. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.